Welcome into this week's Triumph Spotlight from the High Tech Studios in Blacksburg, Virginia. Our guest today is Dante Lovett. This Crofton, Maryland native is a true freshman defensive back on the football team, and has enjoyed a stellar first season here in Blacksburg, acting as a vital piece in one of the best secondaries in the ACC. And Dante joins us next on this week's Triumph Spotlight. Today's show is brought to you by Triumph NIL. The Triumph Digital Network is a fully integrated portal featuring individual channels for Dante and all of your favorite Hokie athletes. Visit triumphnil.com for exclusive engagement, merchandise, content opportunities, and subscriptions. All right, I'm Kyle Marshak. I think some introductions are in order here from the High Tech Studios. We've got Giovanni Heater as my co-host today. Across the way behind the desk is Nick Brown producing behind the scenes. And of course, across the table from us is that young talent we were talking about, Dante. Thank Thank you for joining us today. No problem. Thank you for having me. Of course. Well, you've spent just a few months in Blacksburg, and you've made a pretty big impact so far. But first, how are you liking Blacksburg so far? I like it. It's a big adjustment for me coming from Maryland. I usually come from like the city area. But like, I feel like I'm adjusting pretty well. So yeah, I like you, it. You've been a good fit. You and the boys absolutely cooking this past weekend in Chestnut Hill, a 48-22 win over the Eagles. But this felt like another step in the right direction, right? So you've proven that you can win some big home games. Now you guys took the show on the road. What went into this week? What was different? Uh, I heard there was some stirrups before the game, an earlier wake-up call. Do you think that helped really uh, carry the momentum? I feel like what led to like us coming in so hot, I feel like our preparation. Like this week we were so locked in. Like we just were just... Prep, we were prepping. Like, we knew it. Like, we knew that, like, this was going to be a big game for us. Like, and we knew that the week before, we didn't come out with, like, all the intensity that we could have and all that. But, like, that early wake up call, they did a really, really good job of making sure all of us were up. Like, we had things out there, like, to make sure we were really ready to go at that 12 o'clock game. So, it's like, everyone did a real good job of preparing us for that. And it, it paid off. Now, describe that locker room vibe to us, right? Because you had a really high. Um, really high point last week as opposed to, you know, the game beforehand, right, from week to week. So how was that locker room persona? How locked in were you guys? We were really locked in because we knew we left out plays on the field at versus Louisville. Like, we knew that, like, we could have played harder. We, we could have done a lot of things different. But we knew that coming into Boston College that it was little errors, like little space for error. So, and we knew that if we did our job, it, it, it didn't have to be perfect, but if we did our job, played with intensity, and had the right mentality, that we would have come out on top. I got to ask you, Dorian Strong starts the ball game with an interception, right? First play of the game. How much confidence does that give you guys as a defense? Huge confidence. It's like when you do that, you realize, like, you first off, you take the confidence from the other team when you do that. Like, first he made a, a great read, undercutting the ball, picking it off. And that just gives the confidence of like, oh yeah, we on you, like we we ready to go now because him he a leader, like he he leads by like his his actions, like him getting a pick, he only got to say anything that just tells everybody let's go and got everybody riled up. Did that confidence carry over to you because you had a couple of pretty good pass deflections? Yeah. Although you said beforehand that you you probably should have picked those off, yeah. but to me I would have been happy to get my hand on the leather regardless. Yeah, it's, I wish I would have intercepted those. <laughs> like one of them was real real high. I was like, if I would have kept running, I feel like I, if I got two hands, I would have I caught it. And then the other one, I just put my hand out, it just broke it up. I should have just turned my hand around and caught it. But two pretty decent plays, but I definitely could have picked them off. A true freshman, obviously, right? And you're getting to play in some big minutes. You and a handful of other guys on the defense as well. A young unit, but so good, one of the best in the ACC. What has allowed you guys to really gel despite being freshmen and, and gel with the older guys as well? I feel like a big thing in our room is honesty. Like, our coach, like, really emphasizes, like, being honest with each other. And, like, I feel like he does a really, really good job of making, of keeping us, like, together. Like, if somebody does something wrong, we call each other out. Like, we got really, really good leaders. Like, Derek Canteen and Dorian Strong really stepped up this year. Like, he, he not, he wasn't a big, like, vocal person, but... He is now he become probably one of the best leaders I've ever had. Him and Canteen combined, those two are just like really, really good leaders. And Monso Delane, like he he's only a sophomore, but like he he tries his best. Like he helps us. Like it was certain things, like if I mess something up, he'll come to me and help me. Like he not opposed to coming to help somebody. So he does step up and help people. So 
Yeah. That's awesome. And, and is there a shared camaraderie between the the young players, you and other true freshmen? You guys all share that experience of being in yeah. your first year? Yeah, we all like we all help each other. Like we see some like we'll help each other. Even if like if like if one of us misses a play, we'll tell the, the other person like what we did wrong so we can help them so they won't mess around, make the same play, mess mess up uh mess up the same spot as us. Well, the DBs uh, in your room in particular, you know, nothing shy of big ability. How about guys like Mose Phillips? He can literally take your head off. Yeah. Uh, already has a targeting call on the season, but <laughs> was such a hard hitter. You know, what did they bring to the table? Him, him, and the rest. Um, Mose, he, yeah, he just he does a really, really good job of just making it known that he's out there, like. You throw a slant across the middle. I ain't gonna lie, you gotta watch yourself with that one because you gonna come down full speed and hit you. Like another one who really like person who really make a big impact. Caleb Woodson, he make a big impact too. Making tackles, he covers ground. We got a lot of like true freshmen who like are gonna make a big impact. Like and they just do their best to like get it when they get in there. They take advantage of the opportunity. How valuable valuable do you think it is to, you know, you don't have to sit back, right? You you get to play minutes, contributing minutes, at, might I add, as a true freshman. How how much can that help you as you continue to get older and uh, have more have more experience under your belt here? I feel like it helps a lot because, right, for example, like me right now, I play a lot of special teams, but which also that plays a big key because. I get to build a trust just off of the fact that I can make open field tackles and all that, show that I can make a tackle in a big moment, one on one with, with a wide receiver, one on one with a returner, all that. So I feel like I feel like when I get out there, I just contribute my best. But I feel like the minutes I'm playing now, I feel like that helped me because certain situations that some kids might not know how to react in, or I've seen because I get to watch like the older kids and I get in versus some of those like top wide receivers in the ACC, and I feel like that's gonna help in the long run. Yeah, it's rare that you get a young talent getting as much burn or minutes as you do. Obviously, this is somewhat of a trend on the team. So was that relationship like with Brent Pry in terms of him just trusting the young guys and their talents? I feel like we have a good relationship with Coach Pry because he puts us out there knowing that we're young and he just has he just has trust in us. But his trust, like it means a lot to a lot of us because it means that he putting out he putting a young kid out there knowing we're going against all them older kids, going against more experienced people, yeah. but he still has to trust in us. And for us, it, it means a lot because we know that we have our coaches trusting us and we just go out there and play. I understand that your family is very involved, right? You have a great support system. How much do they mean to you? And, uh, you know, how have they helped not only get you here, but continue to help you while you are here? Uh, family means a lot to me. Like uh, my mom be at every single game. My dad tries to come to a lot of them, but my mom been at every single game. She hasn't missed a game yet, and she's a big supporter of me. She comes to the hotel for every game, talk to me, make sure I'm good, everything. So it's been a huge part because without my family, it'd be really hard for me to be here because, like, my mom made a lot of sacrifices, like, growing up and all that. And a lot of the things that she sacrificed paid off for us and me and my sister and just helped me get to where I'm at today. Yeah, your your mother is a, a, a very unique personality, and it, it seems to be one that is so you know extroverted in showing her support for you. Which um, Gio and I both share jokes about that because our our mothers are the same way. His especially. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, talk about that with us, right? Your your mother was recently in a podcast and talked about the experience of the recruitment process as a parent. What's it like having a mother who is so involved in your career? Um, it helps a lot because my mom was also a D1 athlete herself and she was an assistant college coach in basketball. So a lot of stuff she knows, like, in the recruiting process, when there was, like, times where coaches were trying to, like, feed me, like, false things, my mom would, like, try to, like, weed it out and all that. Like, it was times where I got offered. She was like, congratulations now. Don't mean nothing. Keep going. It could be going tomorrow. Like, she tried to, like, humble me at, at certain points because she know that, like, when you get, like, when you get on, like, on a high – it's always a load that can come with it. And she just taught me that, like, and so her being, like, there, supportive and all that, like, taught me a lot, and it helped me a lot through a lot of things. It's awesome. Well, your pops, he's a high school basketball yeah. coach, right? Actually has a great relationship with women's basketball head coach Kenny Brooks here. Do you know Coach Brooks at all? Yeah. Have you had any conversations with him in your time here? Yeah, I know Coach Brooks. I remember one time I came on my visit, and my dad had brought me over there to talk to him. And my dad was telling he was telling me he was a big fan of mine. I was like, oh, wow, I didn't even know that. <laughs> my dad was telling me stories about, like, 
Just go see him, like, go to the games and all that. So every time I see him, I speak, talk to him for a little while. So, so how are those two close? How did how did they get to know each other? Um, My dad's a, a girls, a high school girls basketball coach. So, like, he has two girls on his team that they're recruiting. And my dad was just, my dad knew a lot of people because my dad also played college basketball. So that was a relationship he already had. And so all that. Very cool. Very so cool. so who's winning a one on one, your father or your mother? Oh, right now <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. I ain't gonna lie, I don't know. They're both buckets in college? Yeah, they're both were. I'm That's not cool. Sure. So what other coaching relationships are there? I'd imagine your mother knows plenty in the co- the college basketball realm as well. Yeah, my mom knows a lot of people, but she's really not involved with basketball as much as my dad is no more. Cause my mom got out of coaching and all that. So she my mom's a teacher right now, so she has the connections, like, <clears throat> it's been a couple of times where we go places, and oh, she's like, oh, that's so-and-so. They know who she is. Like, my dad got a lot of the connects because he stayed in, like, the game for so long and just stayed connected through all that. Well, your parents were hoopers. W- what are you doing on the football team here? Um, <laughs> I stopped hooping when I was, like, a freshman. I was I was decent, but I'm, who wants a six-foot-one, like, dude who just drives to the rim all the time? I could shoot a little bit. But I was just playing like Westbrook and all that. <laughs> <laughs> so Westbrook can dunk. What yeah. about you? Oh yeah, I can dunk. Yeah, that's, that's what I figured. <laughs> yeah. We we saw the ups in that that, that Boston College game, right? Exactly. All right, so let's let's switch the uh, the palette here to your experience with Triumph NIL. How have they empowered you in your time in Blacksburg? Um, Triumph has definitely helped a lot. Like with just being able to get paid through like the name, image, and likeness, I feel like it helps. It makes things easier. For college athletes, especially myself, because sometimes college athletes might not have much coming out of like from where they're from. But like, I feel like it gives you a great opportunity to also like learn how to like to deal with money, like learn how to like do things with different money and all that. Mm. So, yeah, that's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. Tell us more about you off the field, right? I I know that you love playing football, but there's got to be more uh, than, than than just the pigskin. So, what do you enjoy to do in your free time? Me, I enjoy just like I like relaxing, like. I like to watch movies, watch YouTube. One thing about me, I used to do when I was at home, when I was younger, I used to go roller skating. I was really, really good at roller skating. Like, I I picked it up when I was young. Like, my sister's good at it. My mom's good at it. So, it'd be times that we'd go as a family and just go roller skating. I'd go backwards, all that, have my own pair of roller skates, things like that. Awesome. I've tried that before. I'm terrible. Now, roller blades or roller skates? I do both. Both? Okay. I started on roller blades. Then I didn't like them no more because they got annoying, so I switched to roller skates. But I could do both right now. There you go. So are there roller rinks around here that you're you're styling at? Right here, around here, no, I haven't gone because I don't want to fall and get hurt. So <laughs> yeah, fair enough. I feel like Coach Pryor would yeah. like, like, put you guys in a bubble. Like, please yeah. don't do anything. Is that actually like in like NFL contracts? That's a thing, right? Like you're not allowed to do certain extracurricular things that would put you at risk of harm or injury. Um, and, and the list is very extravagant. You'd be yeah. surprised some of the things on there. Is that a thing at all at the college level where they're like, please don't do anything dangerous? <laughs> it, it's not, but it's pretty known. Like that's, at that point, it's like, that's on you. If you get hurt doing something dumb, it's like, come on now. Like yeah. that could be your future. Like if you mess around in fall doing something like that, like, like skateboarding or something, your opportunity could come like the next day and you don't even know and you're not gonna be ready. You're gonna be hurt. And that's somebody else stepping up at that point. Yeah. yeah. You mentioned movies. What's what's your favorite film? Um my favorite film, I got two. I like the the Lion King, the new one. Okay. I got my okay. favorite movie as a kid was called Spirit. It's about a uh, a horse in a yeah. native in a Native American. And she's oh, yeah. talking about yeah. A little the, Disney. There yeah, you go. I like there it. There you go. I like nice. it. So one intense activity that I've heard a lot of athletes like to partake in that you can't get injured in, the OG Fortnite map is back. Mm. What are the thoughts on that? You a Fortnite guy? <clears throat> oh not really. I never <laughs> I never was good at Fortnite. Like for me, I was more of like a Call of Duty guy. Like, okay. When mm. people are playing Fortnite, I'll just be on Call of Duty, just playing. And I'll go play uh the shipment map. Okay. And just run around. That's a just, classic. Yeah, we run around with a shotgun and just <laughs> 2k madden those those in there as well yeah yeah 2k for sure 2k madden madden i play too like risky like i just go for everything like fourth down I, sometimes there's been times i threw the ball the whole game like i didn't run the ball once it just, okay. yeah they don't pay off too well for me now i'm not a huge video game guy but one thing i am locked in on is the new college football game that's coming out next year i mean you are going to be in a video game how does yeah. that feel that's Pretty darn cool. Yeah, it's definitely cool because I used to uh, play NCAA 14. I had, That's the game. Yeah, I had one team I always would use, uh, Oregon. That was one of, that yep. was one of my uh, dream schools as a kid because of that game. 
I always use D'Anthony Thomas and Marcus Mariota. I run the read option and just hand it off or run with the quarterback every single time. <laughs> Nick Brown approves. You can't see it, but he's giving us thumbs up. Nick, over there. Nick Brown, like I said, it, we, so locked in on that game. Nick and I did this thing where you can like jailbreak it and make yeah. it. They call it like college football revamped. It's the old game, but it's all the new players and uniforms mm-hmm. and stadiums and fields. It. And so, it, needless to say, me and Nick have played as you on a video game before, which is <laughs> kind of weird. Yeah, that's, crazy. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. All right. Well. I think uh, we, we've hit all the good points. We're going to go speed into round. a speed round. Let's okay. do it. Cool. All right, let's start with the first one. We always got to go open with this. Pre-game playlist. What are you bumping before that last game or, or ahead of NC State in a few days? Um, For me, it's either going to be like, ooh, a uh, little baby. We play, says that. Yeah? we play a lot of Kodak, Kodak okay. Black. Yeah, those pie, those two pie, Kodak Black, little baby. All right, that. all right. Now here's here's your opportunity for an nil plug here. Favorite restaurant uh, or go to food order here in Blacksburg? Do we need the Dante Love It Burger or milkshake or something? Ooh, milkshake, yeah, <laughs> vanilla milkshakes. That's my thing. Okay, but like my go to food order right now, like I'll go to PKs, get some buffalo chicken dip, Pretty and good. from real real hungry, I will get the little. Uh, Little wing bites with the little uh, cheetah, the cheetah um, mild lemon pepper. Okay. So, yeah, that's what I like it. Okay. All right. I okay. like it. What about your go to cookout order? All right, go to cookout order is a double bacon cheeseburger, Cajun fries, and a vanilla milkshake. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's a new record. Zero hesitation. Nick, you got the stopwatch on that? <laughs> <laughs> Zero hesitation there. I love it. Any, uh, are you a superstitious guy? Any pregame rituals or routines that you go through? <laughs> um, pregame, hmm. One thing I always do, I always find my mom in the stands, like, like on the field, because I want to know where she's sitting at. So I'll find her in the stands before the game. Every time I say hi, and then go back in, lock in. But really, just on the field, I just be loose, just having fun, just be dancing around, just like I always do a couple high passes, go get them, go t- like make sure I go get them and all that. So yeah. About it. There we go. I like it. All right. So we talked about basketball. So I'm going to remove that from the options here. Okay. If you were to play another sport at Virginia Tech, what would it be? Track. track. I ran track in high school. So gotcha. track was actually one of my, my second favorite sport because I just like beating people. Like sprinter, was, I'm assuming? Yeah, sprinter. I ran the one, two. Um, I actually could run the 400, too. Okay. I ran the 400 in high school, like on a four by four. I never trained for it, but. I was splitting like forty nines. Okay, and all that. so that's that gonna, that's pretty fast. Yeah. <laughs> what about the one and the two? What are we What are we talking about here? Uh, my junior year I ran uh ten eighty three, and that was my first year running. Like I didn't. Dang. Yeah, it was just I just went out there and ran. Like my senior year, I didn't run style. Fast. Yeah, yeah, I just went out there and ran. <laughs> that boy. Yeah. I just felt like running. Yeah. <laughs> so is that something you've talked about with uh, Cole back by any chance? Yeah, and, I actually talked to him about it. I was like, I'm a, I want to go train with them one point. Yeah. Let's just see how fast I can do it. I mean, you're not too far off. I mean, Cole Back obviously is the same thing as you, just a gift of speed. I mean, his PR from the last time I saw was somewhere in the really low tens without a wind assist. He went so. 982. Is that, was that wind assist or no? I don't think so. I mean, I don't care. It can be fully wind assisted. I'm getting like 11 seconds yeah. best. So, yeah, he, and that's really generous. I'm pushing 14 <laughs> personally. He a different style. He a different, like, he, he different. Like, he's fast, fast. Like, sometimes I look at him and be like, oh, he's not running. And he just blow by you like, oh, he is running. Like, yeah. Yeah. Is that just a God-given gift? Some people can just move? Yeah, he, he can run. Like, he could really run. Like, like he one of them dudes where he going to go around. Like, you just got to take off and run with him. Like, just turn around before he even gets you and just take off. Yeah. He, he's fast, fast. That just like felt like a wise old man sitting on a porch in Forrest Gump, just being like, he can run. <laughs> he really can run. How about the favorite uniform combo for you? Um, I actually like the orange and white. Yeah, I have the orange and white and all the all orange because it's just different. Like, so you're talking the white lids, orange, yeah, jersey, orange pants. Yeah, that or the white lids, orange jersey, white bottoms, mm. white cleats. Mm, okay. Yeah. We haven't worn those yet with you on the field, right? I last time was at Boston College in 2021, I think, the last time they wore that. I haven't done that. So last week was a newer combination. What yeah. was it, the white, white maroon? Haven't done that in a minute yeah. either, yeah. yeah. But is there is there a – oh, they've never done it before. Is there a yearn to keep that going for sure? I'm not sure. I, don't, I didn't know we were doing who, that. Who decides that? Is that Coach um, Pry? I think Coach Pry and the captains. I, I think I'm, – I'm pretty sure it's Coach Pry, though, like – Pretty good combination. Man. Yeah. I would, I, to be a fly in the wall in that conversation. Yeah. All right, fellas. Yeah. What are we wearing this week? Yeah. yeah. That'd be that'd be pretty neat. What unis did they put you in when you did your uh your recruiting pictures? I took 
my favorite ones was the one I took the uh, all orange ones. Okay. With in uh, Lane Stadium at nighttime. I did all of them actually. I think I did all white. Did you do the Hokey Stone? No, that's the one I did not do. I did not do mm. the Hokey Stone one. And I remember when, when my visit, I took a picture of number one. I don't know what made me do that because. I didn't know I was gonna wear end up wearing number one. I used I wore number four on all my other visits, and I was just like, "Let me try number one this time, change it up." Cause I wore I took number four in every single one of them. I was just like, "Nah, let me change it." And that ended up being my favorite ones. Huh? So, what about your favorite part of your recruiting process? Was it the photos? Was it just seeing campus? Um, my favorite part was just like getting able to being able to go every place and see like different cultures, different schools, like certain things. Like and the man, like I heard about it. I didn't know I didn't know much about it, but I heard about it. I was like, oh, when I got here, I was like, I like it. It's cool. And a lot of other schools you get to see like what they had to offer. You get to see like you get to see like you could compare things. Like what what do you want from one school versus what do you not, not like in another school? You get to like compare like coaching staffs, all that stuff. What uh what game did you come to on your recruiting visit? <laughs> um my first visit when I came here, I came to Notre Dame. Mm, that was a good Sandman to see. No yeah. doubt about it. I came to Notre Dame. And then I came back. I think I was already committed at the time. I came back from Miami. And I can't remember the other one. It was a mid-tier Sandman. That was a noon yeah. kick. Yeah. The <laughs> night games are a little different. Yeah. That's bold to describe Sandman as mid-tier. Whoa. But. There's still a ranking system to how good the okay. Sandmans are. You have a fair point. You have a fair point. Well, speaking of They're ranking systems. They're all elite, systems, just, just yeah. putting that out there. Speaking yeah. of ranking systems, you got you got three siblings as well. Yeah. You have a favorite? <laughs> nah, I ain't really got a favorite. Nah, I, ain't, I definitely ain't got no favorite. Like, uh, little ones, it's not like you're on a live podcast or anything. Yeah, so. nah, the little ones, they, they call me a lot. And my old, older sister, I see my older sister a lot more because she lived near me. My younger ones live in New Jersey, my dad. But nah, I don't really got a favorite. My sister come up here a lot, though. But I, I see all my, I like I love all of them the same. <laughs> that's good, good that's, answer. That's a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> Just saved yourself a headache. Whew, that was a close one. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, I think that about wraps things up. So we always tee it off with this last question. What kind of mark do you want to leave on Blacksburg? I want to leave a mark where my name will hold like hold weight forever. Like my name will never die out here. And I want to make sure I leave a legacy and make sure I leave a mark to be one of the ones, the first ones to bring Virginia Tech back to where it was before. Awesome. G Love it. Final thoughts? Yeah, just really, really appreciate you coming on, man. It's been fun and uh, looking forward to uh, seeing what you guys do. Last couple of games of the of the regular season, and then uh, let's play another one after, huh? Oh, yeah. Maybe two more after. Yeah. That's true. It's still, it's still in the cards. That's, yeah, that's certainly still, still in the option. cards. Yeah. yeah, you guys got to be locked in on that. We certainly are. So we appreciate your time, Dante. No problem. Thanks for having me. Of course. Thank you very much. All right. Well, I'm Kyle Marshak. Of course, Giovanni Heater was alongside me. Nick Brown was behind the desk. And for Dante Levitt, we'll see you guys next time. Make sure to be there. NC State at home Saturday, 3.30 kick. But for now, signing off from the high-tech studios, we'll see you guys next time on Triumph Spotlight.